flashback. I would not be mad if they made a black and red version like this, you know what I'm saying? With like this ni nice upper. I would totally be down for it. By sheer coincidence. Are we ready? Oh yeah. Hey, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today we finally got a detailed look and breakdown on these bad boys right here. Six years in the making, if you will, from the time that I said that in that alternate motorsport video. And uh, fast forward to 2024, and the time has almost come where these guys right here are about to drop. It's gonna be amazing. Now, real quick, the last time that these released was 2019, something like that. Let me double check, I'm sorry. It was 2019. This is the shoe right here. They came back truer to original form than ever before. That is definitely not the case with this one. This is an alternate take on the original. So there's that. There's some very interesting things about both shoes and everything like that, including if you were to throw in these with the Nike Air on the back and the shoe that they were supposed to have been built off of, which is the SB version of the Jordan 4. So this is the box for the brand new version. Essentially, it's a flipped version of the original box. The only thing that's truly different besides, you know, the low logo branding and stuff because this they tried to make it as close to original as possible but still making it a Jordan branded product somewhere after that release they decided to scrap that and just go straight OG that's why you see the Nike Air branding now instead of the Jumpman and the only other difference is that there's the pull tab thingy that's like right over here instead of it being an actual like pull tab with the little metal grommet and stuff like that now these are being dubbed the Air Jordan 4 bread reimagined because it's supposed to be a reimagined take on the original I feel like it should be just called like bread alternate or something like that you know what I mean? Especially if you're going to force us to use that bread terminology, even though they're black cements, but hey, that's a different topic for a different day. The only reason why I say that is simply because I don't feel like any of the reimagined releases outside of the Lost and Founds have truly been reimagined. Now, I will say with a slight caveat that I don't know if those are technically like a reimagined pair or are, are they because they were called lost and founds so they had a very specific theme to them now all the other reimagined pairs whether it be the black and red with the patent or the suede and nubuck royals or these guys right here like they're actually like alternate versions of original colorways but not quite with that lost and found flavor so like i think they might be two different things but i don't know but if they are one and the same i will say that the lost and founds leaps and bounds better than any of the other releases as far as overall presentation only because it really went after that theme you know what I mean of like what it was supposed to be so are they reimagined technically I don't know are these reimagined I would just call it alternate you know what I mean so that's what they did back then they had the motorsport Jordan 4s that finally released originally a PE and then they released a black version and guess what they called them the alternate motorsports hey genius now as far as this shoe is concerned this is a 1989 classic done up in a brand new look technically as far as this specific colorway is concerned where they took what was originally Durabuck later Later on use synthetic nubuck and stuff like that like these 2019s uh, and then they switch it up with using actually nice leather so uh, we're going to talk about all the differences and things like that because the reimagined pair are not built quite like the remastered or og whatever it is that you want to call them instead they built them off of this which is interesting because some of the things i totally am cool with some of the things i'm kind of like hey wait a minute that's not actually an original feature so why is it on here the main thing that they took from the sb version of the shoe is the overall shape and so they did and they did that well if you compare this reimagined pair to the 2019 release the shape of the shoes has been refined even more than it was on these guys if you were to compare these to their original um what do they call them remastered which was these guys right here that i can't remember when these released it was a while earlier 2015 ish 2015 2016 if you were to look at the toe boxes just alone the toe box on the white cements is just bulky, boxy, disgusting, looks nothing like the original. Whereas these guys right here are a little bit more streamlined, a little bit closer to the original. Are they exact? No. Are the Nike SBs? No, but it's still closer than that one. I will say real quick though, I really hope, cause this is my worn pair of my 2019s. I just hope that this don't happen. <laughs> A couple of things that they added to the reimagined pair would be located right there on the toe box. They actually use those die cut lines at the toe rand as well as on the panel underneath at the underlay panel that's right here at the base of the tongue. They do have those tiny little die cut marks, much like what they've been adding on the Air Jordan 3s. Uh, those are not on the SB version of the shoe, and I don't even recall them being on the original versions of the shoe, so I do think that that's a little bit strange that those are on there. Maybe they were on some version of the original, because as I've been deep diving into all of these like remastered or OG or whatever. I've been finding out that there's just so many different factories making the same 
and shoe that they are all a little bit different than one another. And this started all the way back in 1985 with the Air Jordan 1 and just kind of continued on from there. Now, one thing that they kept from the SB release that I, I definitely question on this one is the tongue. So the tongue was puffed up because, you know, skating. Whereas the originals, including these 2019 retros and the OG retro, very much closer to the original with a nice thin tongue, felt great on foot, really nice fit. These guys, they have the fat tongue again. So that's where I'm kind of like, why did you do that? Like, please pay attention to detail, you guys. This is your job. And then last but not least, as far as the comparison to the SB, the midsoles feel similar. They don't feel the same, they do feel similar. So this shoe right here is by far the most comfortable Air Jordan 4 I've ever worn. And the tech specs are not original, which is super weird. Whereas these guys are a blend of the two. So they do have the original tech specs, but the polyurethane that they use for the midsole just feels a little bit squishier, which I really enjoy. Now, something that the shoes actually come with is this black hang tag right here, which is actually a play on the original. So they did come with the hang tag. This one's just black instead of orange. And I think that's kind of cool. Now, as for the outsole, it's the same exact thing as every other Air Jordan 4. This is the 2019 release, and you can see that they are pretty much identical. It's the first Air Air Jordan in the signature line to use herringbone as a traction pattern. The Air Jordan 1, 2, and 3 all use more of a radial pattern, and uh, this was the move, I think. I think this was great. Now, moving on up, we do have the polyurethane midsole, like I was saying before. It does feel a little softer or a little squishier than some of the previous releases outside of the Nike SB one. Again, I think that's a really good move. They don't feel like the Nike SBs, but maybe they will once you start to break them in. And inside that polyurethane is an encapsulated four foot air sole unit, and then in the rear, there's a visible one. They did change the insole so this actually does come with a real polyurethane insole it's not the dream cell stuff so this i think is a, another great move I, I just love that it's in there now as far as the upper is concerned that's where these guys are truly reimagined or an alternate version of because they take and replace the synthetic nubuck or what was originally used in the 1989 release which was durabuck and they replaced it with all the leather and everything it's not tumbled it is slightly textured i love this it looks so good the only complaint that i can talk about with my particular pair is actually on the toe boxes both of mine have these fing divots. What the hell? What is that from? I'm not sure exactly. The only thing I can guess is that they were put in the box like this and their toe, like it literally matches right up. Jordan Brand should have used those foamy pieces that Nike uses. Jordan Brand has used them on shoes like the, the 34s and the 36s. Oh, right, for the fins. Yeah, for, you know, the things that are fabric that don't matter, but hey, they wanted to keep their shape and stuff. Not this. Whatever, dude. This is Jordan Brand at this point. When a shoe comes up like this, I expect it. Should I expect it? No, but I do. But yeah, I think that if you're able to get a pair, you should be happy. Are they going to be super easy to get? I don't know. It's not like the reimagined threes were hard to get. Like they were sitting around for a little bit and stuff. So I'm sure that it depends on your area. Speaking of your area, our last upload that we did, we, we talked about the Off-White Jordan 5s because I had just recently got them. I asked you guys if you wanted a video. A lot of you said yes. That's why the video was made. Inside that video though, I did ask the question like, where are you from and what did they call specific colorways of shoes way back when they originally released? Because we didn't have these nicknames where I'm from in the Bay Area. Like we didn't call them anything but what the color was. Black cement, white cement, the military blues, the fire. Like that was literally their nicknames. You know what I mean? like we didn't call them breads or whatever like cherries and all that stuff it just wasn't a thing until retro started happening and the comments were lit in that whole video dude like everybody was leaving comments on like where they're from what they called things all this stuff a lot of people were on the same page so i just really appreciated that you guys did that and took the time to leave the comments i, I really do thank you so much so uh yeah you guys are awesome and for weighing in on soda <laughs> well yeah i was gonna say we asked multiple questions i just didn't want to like focus on i wanted to focus on the one question well i have a new question what? Whatever state you're in, what is the sandwich of your state? So we just Ooh. watched a whole video on that and in and out burgers got chosen for our state. That was a, uh, which is weird. Right? Yes. That's not a sandwich. Technically it is. But it's hey, not. No, technically a, a hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> uh, I didn't make the rules, okay? It's just what it is. But yeah, should we do a question of the day? Every video? I'd that love would be it. So, so much fun. You know what I mean? Just like a random ass like, hey. But yeah, for engagement for the algorithm. Anyways, if you're interested in these guys right here, they do fit true to size. So whatever you typically wear in your Air Jordan 4s, that's exactly what I would recommend. The leather is very plush. So for all you pinky toe guys out there that you know get your pinky toes obliterated by this little hump right here, I would still go with whatever you typically go with just to be safe. But just know that if you did put a little bit of extra time into these guys, uh, you might be okay in some cases. Uh, obviously, if you have an extremely wide foot, that won't be the case for you. But for somebody that just has a slightly 
Lightfoot. I think that you'll be okay. But sound off below and let us know what you think about these in the comment section. Which one do you prefer? Do you prefer the original styling with the Durabuck slash Nubuck upper, or do you like the alternate version with, you know, the nice leather and things like that? Also, how do you think that they stack up against these? I think that they did a good job replicating the shoe overall. I just question why the non-skate version has the puffy tongue, because I understand why the skate version did. I will say that they have the excuse of being like, well, it's a, it's a reimagined. It doesn't have to be like the original. I, I get that. So with the militaries, let's see what happens. But with all that being said, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. We will catch you guys on the next one. So until then, have a good one.